Hi guys, my name is Marie and welcome to my Kawaii World! I create a lot of videos about life in Japan and Korea as well as travel guides and if you're wondering a little bit more about who I am and what I'm doing in Korea then keep watching this video. A lot of that boils down to my decision to quit my six-figure job and become a stay-at-home mom. And this is what I was thinking when I made that decision. So this line represents our life. We are born and then if we're lucky, we'll live to maybe about 80 on average. And the halfway point is age 40 and then let's fill in the other points just for a reference. Where are you on this timeline? I'm right here in between 30 and 40. And then we have childhood, which is age 1 through 18. And then you have your college and maybe graduate school years from maybe 18 to 25. And then you work from about age 25 to 65. And then from 65 onwards, you're retired. So this means you'll spend roughly 25 to 30% of your life as a child or teen or student where you're just developing and learning and this time is golden so treasure it and then you'll spend roughly 50 to 60 percent of your life working and adulting and depending on how long you live you'll spend roughly 18 to 20 percent of your life in retirement so don't save everything till the end now let's take a look at parenthood we have about 18 years of raising a child and I guess you never really stop being a parent, but assuming that your kid goes to college, they'll probably only be living with you for about 18 to 20 years, and that stretches out longer the more kids you have. So I think that when your child's an infant up to one years old, that's when your child really needs you for just pure survival, especially where they're in, where they're in the fourth trimester, like the first three months of life, where they just, they're totally in survival mode. And then up to age three is when, like, it's before they go to preschool, they are wearing diapers, they need help feeding themselves, and they just really need someone around to care for them. It's a really difficult time. For me, it was one of the most difficult times of my life when I first became a new mom. But if you look at the percentage of like what percentage of your life is this? It's only a fraction of your life, like 1% or less. And if you have more kids, maybe that time period extends to like 5%. So one, one to 5% of your life is when, you know, your child is really going through these rapid stages of development. They're really growing and changing and they really need you there and they want you there. They want you by their, by their side. So, when I looked at this, like it's just a small fraction of my life and the baby time is so hard, but it's so good. It's like the most fulfilling and rewarding thing that I've ever experienced. Um, so I wanted to be present for it and I didn't want to have to juggle um, my work and my family. And there's really like, I feel like there's really no balance. You just have to make sacrifices and there is an opportunity cost to everything so you know what I had to give up something and what I gave up was my career and I always planned on going back to it um, I never planned to be a stay-at-home mom forever but um, so far I haven't gone back to work um, now is probably the time when I should be going back to work I'm half Korean and half Japanese but I'm 100% American. I was born and raised in Southern California and I didn't actually live in Asia until 2014 when I moved to Japan. Then I lived in Japan for three years and in 2017, I moved to Seoul, Korea. Before moving to Japan, I worked as a lawyer for three years at a law firm in New York and then at, for four years for the federal government in Washington, DC. Five years ago, I had a baby and her name was Sienna and that was a life-changing experience for me. I didn't realize this, but before I had kids, I think I had like something that I was always searching for, like a little empty space in my heart that was unfulfilled and I was looking for that, for like that something through like travel 
or through my, my ambition in my career or buying things. But after I had a baby, that space was just filled up. So I loved being with my daughter. I loved being a mom. Uh, and when you work for the federal government, you don't get maternity leave. You have to take your sick leave and you only have so much of it. So if you run out of sick leave, then you can take unpaid time off if your supervisor approves and people can also donate their leave to you. But there's no such thing as maternity leave when you work for the federal government. So I was able to take about five months off, thankfully, um, but a lot of that was unpaid and I eventually had to go back to work. So I sent my daughter to daycare. I would get her ready in the morning. I would have like an hour to an hour and a half commute each way. And then by the time I got home, she would be re like ready to go to bed. And I was really stressed out because she didn't drink her milk from the bottle at daycare. So to make up for it, she would nurse throughout the night and that would keep both of us awake. So I wasn't really sleeping that well and neither was she. I was really worried about her sleeping patterns. Um, and then at the same time, one of my coworkers passed away and that really impacted me. Even though I wasn't close to him, it really kind of made me think about my priorities. I remember going to his funeral and his son spoke and said that it was such a shame that he died so unexpectedly because he never got to enjoy his retirement and travel and be with his family and spend as much time with his sons as he had wanted to. So I just kind of thought like, what am I even doing with my life? Like, I just want to hang out with my daughter. Before I became a mom, I was all about my career and myself and my own ambition. And I never wanted to be a stay at home mom. I just didn't really think of that as an option for myself because my mom and my grandma always emphasized that it was really important for me to get an education and to be able to support myself and not to rely, have to rely on anyone. Because when my grandma was younger, her father died of tuberculosis and that was really hard on the family because he left behind eight kids. So they really struggled. And my grandma always like took that as a lesson and really emphasized to her children that they needed to be able to support themselves financially. So anyway, after I had a baby, I just had a complete change of priorities and all of that kind of went out the window and I just wanted to be with my child and spend time with her. I didn't want to like read about her milestones on the report from daycare. I wanted to be there to witness it myself. So when my husband told me that he wanted to apply for a job in Tokyo, I was like, yeah, go ahead, why not? I don't think that either of us uh, anticipated or really planned on him getting the job. It came as sort of a surprise to me, but when he did, we moved to Tokyo and I haven't looked back since. Do I have insecurities about what I left behind? Yes, I'll, I, all the time I do. I go through like a mini crisis every once in a while. I don't even want to look at like LinkedIn. I don't want to see the profiles of my peers who I graduated law school with and who I worked with early on in my career because I feel a little bit inadequate, I guess. Because I think that they're probably all at the prime of their careers. They're probably managing people and maybe some of them have become partners, I don't know. I feel kind of obsolete and I feel a little bit behind the rest of my class. So that kind of, that kind of gets to me sometimes. When it comes down to it, I know that if I died tomorrow, then I would die knowing that I spent the last five years of my life doing what I absolutely love and being with the people who are important to me. So in that sense, I don't regret my decision. So I created my YouTube channel as sort of a side thing when I went to Japan uh, because I was really into Japanese crafts like needle felting and I created videos to share that with other people and then I had a baby in 2015 so I didn't have time to do crafts or anything like that. I was just trying to get by on the day to day which let me tell you raising uh, two young children is much harder than working at a law firm. It is. Working would be a vacation compared to raising kids. But we started to put up videos about Japanese snacks and Japanese UFO catchers, which is something that we did. We played every single weekend, if not more frequently, and my husband got really good at it. 
and me filming it was a little bit nuts because I would wear my baby strapped to my body in the ergo and then I would film with this little Polaroid cube camera which looked like a toy. So she would always try to like grab it and put it in her mouth while I was filming. So there is like that struggle and then I was trying to like film my husband winning and then sometimes I would play it and film myself. So it was a little bit crazy but then um, but we really loved what we did and we had a lot of fun. And then in 2017 we moved to Korea and I, I started playing claw machines here but let me tell you it's not the same. It's not as good as it is in Japan. We still play claw machines but we don't win as much. It's a game of chance here, whereas in Japan, it's a game of skill. So um, I started creating videos about Korea and I'm a creative person. So um, I get inspired by like my surroundings. When I was in Japan, I loved the Disney store and the Sanrio store in Japan. So I made videos about that. And then here in Korea, I make videos about cafes and shopping and Korean food and all of these things that uh, interest me. Cities are not static, they're always changing and the cafe that you visited five years ago may not be here today. So I like to capture these things and kind of curate them and put them up on my channel so they're available not just to me but to all of you guys. Um, so if you can't be here in person that you can then you can at least visit it virtually and be inspired by it. So another thing that I want to like emphasize with my channel is that I'm 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 old. I'm 37 years old and I have a five year old and three year old and I still go to those cool cafes in Hongdae where the teenagers and like 20 somethings hang out and like I don't feel ashamed about it because I love those cafes where everything is pink and gold and marble and I think that my kids will love it too and they do and there are some cafes that exclude kids they're like no kids cafes and I really don't like those cafes but I also kind of understand where they're coming from I just want to emphasize to you that youth has no age and no matter how, how old you are you're never too old to love Hello Kitty you're never too old to love like cute and beautiful and pretty things so I just want to showcase that my channel and another core value that I have is that family is the most important thing and the most important thing to me is to be a good mom to my girls to raise them to be kind and compassionate people and I want them to value intellect over beauty and looks it's so important to me and also uh, by having them travel and by taking them to different restaurants and sending them to local preschools rather than the American or international school um, by having them learn new languages. I hope that they'll become more open-minded and that they will see the world as a place not where we should build walls but where we should open our doors and welcome people with open arms and see that like they're not so different. Asians are not so different from Americans. We're all like we're all people. So if you guys like my channel and if you like what it's about, if you enjoy my videos, I hope that you will stick around and subscribe. And also leave me a comment below and introduce yourself and let me know where you're from. Tell me a little bit more about yourself so that I can get to know you better. I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye.